Would you join me in the prayer after the candlelight? Our God, our divine, our creator, place those who are in our hearts on this day of remembrance, named or unnamed, young and old, of every race, faith, and gender experience whose life was stolen by violence. We pray in your embarrassed there is now comfort, there is now love, there is now peace. Bless those who survived and continue to see a new day rise in the rays of your sun. Bless every beautiful gender of your creation. Bless us in all our different lives and experiences. We know your image is abundant and refuses any limit or constraint. That says there's only one right way to be. We know in you the possibility are endless and each of every a holy spark of life. Amen. The message today is very difficult to deliver. People read the Holy Bible and the sacred texts differently through various aspects. We would like to know the truth and the will of God behind the text we read. In church and the human history, we tried. Sometimes we assume we are doing great, but sometimes we are reluctant to admit that we have failed again and again, especially when we look around at what's happening in our world. For women in church and the feminist theologians, like many of us here today, the core questions are many. The first wave of feminist biblical interpretation and theology in the 1960s focused on the patriarchy and androcentrism in church daily life. In the Bible understanding and theology we have adopted in the church for hundreds of years. The second wave of the feminist movement pay more attention to different experiences that can contribute to the liberations and the social transformation, such as from various social locations from the 1960s uh, to the early 1990s. The third wave of the feminist movement emphasizes the non euro American woman's experience especially African Americans and the womanist, their experience since the early 2000s. However, women's voice outside the English or Europe were not heard enough. The transnational feminist criticism and the movement challenged the meaning of being born as woman in the Western world and the presuppositions behind them. Korean theologians and feminists, Kyun Hyun Kyun, argued as a Korean woman, I do theology in search of what it means to be fully human in my struggle for the holiness and in my people's concrete historical fight for freedom. She further argues that our body and experience are the text. The Bible is a context and a challenge the paradigm of biblical interpretation. The Holy Bible is no longer the solo sacred text, but should be considered as a means of oppression in various ways. And I believe today we can also adopt this method in seeking God's message in our text and the context on the Transgender Day of Remembrance. As Christians in Hyde Park, we do theology in search of what it means to be fully human in our struggle for the wholeness and in our transgender siblings' concrete historical fight for freedom. 
among the 67 names Tam read today, I cannot help to dig into some of their stories. Lisa loved Truman, was found shot and dead, not far away from her home. Lisa was a graduate of the Kenwood Academy High School, just several blocks away. Was, Lisa was walking near the 79th Street and Cottage Grove Avenue that night when a car drove up and made a U-turn. Lisa's cousins was standing not far away from her, witnessed the car start in front of her, and then Lisa was shot in the chest and died of age of 35 on October 17. WGN reports this incident. Uni Banks, a 21 years old Latina transgender woman, was fatally shot during the home invasion in Chicago on Monday, January 23rd. Banks' mother was also killed in the same shooting with other, two other transgender women. The, the law enforcement told the Chicago Sun Time the suspect is a 19 years old man who lives in the same building. There are two other trans symbols from Chicago, Dominic uh, Dupree and Lovely Page, who lost their life from gunshot this year as well. The violence is from the transphobia and unsecure feeling. They happened when people have deeply rooted negative belief that what is mean to be transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming, and those whose identities don't fit into typical gender rules. The understanding of gender and the scale of violence might be quite different in different ethnic and cultural groups, but the external violence is real. I feel heartbroken to know the following stories. Miles Fitzpatrick from Manville, New Jersey, commits suicide at the age of 17. Libby Martin from Lakefield, Massachusetts, commits suicide at the age of 17. Nova Dune from Manchester, New Hampshire, commits suicide at the age of 14. The internal fear and the loneliness took those teenagers' life away. Today, there's an insert in our bulletin. There, are, you can see there are 67, 67, uh, 67 names in the back and another story in the front. There's a QR code and a link on that. You can find more story by entering those links in your browser or phone or scan the QR code. People joining today online also can find a link in the comments and the descriptions. I hope we can continue to read their story as the text and the sacred text in our life, especially this week. Chicago is one of the most progressive cities in the United States. For a long time, we might have assumed LGBTQ rights are the outdated agenda for us. As a recent survey this August point out, that Illinois has become the magnet, the center for the transgender students seeking protections in school and health care. Many states passed considering anti-trans legislations, not only for in Florida, but at least 14 states passed laws regulating bathroom access, sport participation, a pronounced as a name change, particularly in the K-12 schools. Additionally, at least 18 states passed laws restricting gender-affirming health care, primarily for minors. Families who have the resources and the mobilities start to look for ways to protect their trans children Illinois is one of the safe landing spots. However, four among four, uh, 67 names we heard today are from Chicago and Illinois. 
Two of them are from the south side of the city, where our congregation is located. Our denomination also categorizes us in this region. We know that living in Chicago and Illinois is not like living in paradise at this point, and we, as a follower of Jesus, still have a lot of work to do. In the book of Amos, the prophets delivered a message from God, asking people of God to repent. Perhaps the prophet Amos wants to point out all the unjust incidents all around the country for who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, and they hate the one who provokes in the gate, and they, they abhorb the, new, the one who speaks the truth. There was a society where vulnerable were not protected, and the truth was not allowed to be told or shared. Therefore, God, Adonai Adonai, sent all the enemies to invade Judah and Israel, bring more tragedies and punishment to the people of God, who were really still worshiping God or listening to God at that time. Remember the visions from the book of Genesis. Prophet Amos declared, I overthrow some of you as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a brand standaged from the fire, yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. I believe who hear this scripture today, here, especially here, knew that it was the lack of hospitality that caused the Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed by the fire from the heaven, not caused by the homosexual behavior. Unfortunately, even today, there are still many Christians and politicians who quote a story from the book of Genesis, Sodom and Gomorrah, and use this as a reason to justify their behavior of oppressing the LGB community, especially targeting the transgender symbolings. They assume they are doing the right thing for their God and receiving the benefits for their own good. But the prophet Amos says, For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who affect the righteous, who take a pride and push aside the needy in the gate. Christian cannot earn any honor or glory by hurting others, especially the minority and the disadvantaged group of people. I was reminded of one thing during the book discussions this week regarding what the church could do and say in our time. In the election this week, it's a group called Mom for Liberty. They fair their campaign around the U.S. This conservative political organization advocates against progressive topic in school's curriculum, such as LGBTQ plus rights. And they also ban the books from the public library. They do not want anyone else to read those resources to help the LG people to have their own life, especially the K-12 school students. Those conservative group, Mom for Liberty, they should feel upset, not because their campaign did not win by the general vote, but because a punishment from God is approaching and revealing among them. There was darkness when they run their campaign, but now we see the light. Not just like we light out this candle today, not only to remember our transgender symbolings, but also to remind us of the work we have working on. It can really bring the hope. Being a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, was not easy in the first century. Some of them were Jewish, and most of them were not Jewish. The Orthodox Jewish people treat those Jewish and the non-Jewish Christians like outsiders and oppress them in various ways. 
In other words, those people, they suffer from their own people. The church was a mixture of races, religious and cultural backgrounds. People have different thoughts about being a Christian. Who is Jesus and what Christ has sacrificed for them? They fought against each other and some were asked to leave the church and community. Some of those early Christians lost their life and become martyrs merely because they were different and strange to the rest of the community members. St. Paul reminds the member of the Thessalonian churches to hold on to their faith in God. The oppression was real, but the Holy Spirit and the example of the risen Christ can bring you hope and peace to face all the challenges you were encountered. The house of God is for everyone and allowed everyone to reveal their true selves. I believe our church, our hyper community, the city of Chicago, the state are working on this and becoming the safe place for every child of God. As Christians in High Park, we do theology in search of what it means to be fully human in our struggle for wholeness and in our transgender symbolism's concrete historical fight for freedom. Living an authentic life and maintaining the image of God is not easy in our time either. However, I found a strong connection between the trans trans symbolings and early Christians. Some of us might have heard God's trumpet, especially our trans symboling that we light the candle for today. May they rest in God's heaven and peace where there is no violence but unconditional love. May all who live authentically and work on bringing the love to the universe will continue to encourage each other by saying, then we, are, then we who are alive, who have left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Let us pray. Bless our scars, both physical and emotional, for we know that they not only bear witness of our pain and trauma, they also draw the body maps of our healing of something forever changed that it carries wisdom and resilience. Place the courage of our hearts here today and move, us, move in us as resolved to root out injustice, ignorance, cruelty, and despair. Move us as mercy and open us to the compassion and forgiveness. Move in us as hope that let our minds and hands work for reconciliations and restoration of love to one another and an abundant life for all. Bless us as we carry today and every day this legacy of love and hope for those who have died, for those who are still alive, and as the sweet justice for children yet unborn. For this we pray. Amen.